So what's fascinating is that they're getting responses, lots of responses. At least five sex workers who've been booked into jail have been shown that picture, asked that question, and said, oh, I know that guy. <laughs> yeah, I've been with him. And the information is being classified as helpful. Two of the women who were asked, have you been with him, uh, done sex business with him? And the answer was yes. And what was it, what happened? What, what was it like? They classified or characterized their sex experiences with Rex Hurman as violent and aggressive. Violent and aggressive, they told police. They said he was big. And that's why it stood out. And when big guys, big Johns and clients get violent and aggressive, they remember. And the two sex workers who responded to the sheriff and the department um, employees that were doing this work, that's the answers they got. In fact, the actual group doing the work is called the Suffolk County Sheriff's Department Human Trafficking Unit. They've been conducting the interviews and showing the pictures. They've been doing this in conjunction with not just the Long Island Jail, uh, where you would think, you know, the sex workers were. No, they're doing it with the Nassau County Jail. They're doing it with Rikers Island, Suffolk County Jail. Anybody who's getting booked into those jails is getting shown that picture, women, um, and asked, have you been with this man? Did he purchase your sex services. I want to bring in Sheriff Errol Toulon Jr., the Suffolk County Sheriff. He is leading the charge in this investigation. This is such a great investigative tactic, Sheriff. I'm, I'm very impressed that you've done this coordination with these different jails. How is it going? Did I characterize it right coming in? Is there more to the story? I don't know. Well, first of all, thank you for having me on. And we started our human trafficking unit in 2018, well before a task force was formed. And what we did was we were able to uh, speak to our law enforcement partners and also media accounts to see how we can formulate questions of sex workers coming in our facility. In 2022, when the uh, task force was created and we became a part of it, you know, we started to learn more about a potential suspect. And once we had identified Mr. Hurman, you know, we were able to interview several um, sex workers, not only in our custody, but started to work with sex workers that were not in our custody because not everyone uh, is arrested and see if any of them had any encounters with Mr. Hurman. Can you, can, can you tell me what the word helpful means? Because the report is, is that five of the sex workers have given information about Rex Hurman that's been helpful. Two of them have said he was violent and aggressive with them. What other details do you have about their responses? So, you know, the women, and we've only interviewed two that have stated that they may have had an encounter with Mr. Hurman. Uh, what we still have to do is vet their story because, you know, one, at this point in time, there could be many women that say they had an encounter with him, and we're looking at dates, times, locations, just to verify their story. And so it's very important for us to give this information to the task force as a whole for anyone that may uh, state that. You know, so we're still vetting the story of the two women in our custody that had said they may have had an encounter with Mr. Hurman. And what about the other three? Uh, because five in total have been, quote, unquote, helpful. So the other three might have come through the task force from other means, not necessarily the anti-trafficking unit uh, within the Suffolk County Sheriff's Office. So let me ask you this. I want to kind of move from that to the other side of the investigation, and that is all of the material that was gleaned from Rex Hurman's house. Can you tell me some of the things that came from that house that were helpful in this investigation? You know, unfortunately, only because it's still an active investigation, I cannot talk about the items that were removed from his residence that may be part of a future investigation, which may help either this case or link him to uh, you know, other um, sex workers that may have uh, been murdered. And so, you know, the tax task force as a whole is really just looking at everything that we all garner, whether it's state police, the FBI, the district attorney's office, or even the Suffolk County Police Department, including the Suffolk County Sheriff's Office, are putting together all types of evidence with, that we may be uh, uncovering to see if they're linked to Mr. Hurman, if they're linked to another person, or, um, you know, any crimes that may have been committed in Las Vegas or South Carolina. It's been about six weeks, I think just a little over six weeks since Hurman was arrested. And at that time, 
three of the Gilgo Beach murders uh, were being charged to him. A fourth is Maureen Brainerd Barnes. And the word was is that it's likely he's the chief suspect in it and that it's likely he's going to be charged in, in Maureen Brainerd Barnes' murder as well. Are we closer to seeing that happen? You know, I, I think as the task force progresses, we're trying to make sure, as we did with the first three that we were able to charge Mr. Hurman with, is that we have concrete evidence and we feel comfortable. You know, me as a sheriff and being part of this task force feels very confident that the three, uh, the three charges that Mr. Hurman is currently faced with is that he is the person that committed those murders. And so we want to be very, very clear and concrete when we present this evidence uh, to the courts that we have the correct person. But that fourth one, is it getting close? We're getting there. You're getting there. Okay, that means that Sheriff Errol Tulin, I'm going to have to have you back on again. Thank you for doing this tonight. I know you're a busy man, so taking the time at this time of night, uh, much appreciated, sir. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.